Hi everyone and welcome to another executive interview. I'm thrilled to have with us here today Rowan Hawkins, Executive Director of PYC Therapeutics, an ASX listed company that is revolutionizing RNA therapeutics to address unmet needs in diseases like polycystic kidney disease and autosomal dominant optic atrophy. Rowan, thank you for joining me for this interview. Thanks very much for having me, Rhythm. Absolutely. Now, Rohan, to begin our interview today, it would be great if you could tell us what makes PYC Therapeutics stand out in the field of RNA therapeutics, especially considering your focus on diseases like polycystic kidney disease and autosomal dominant optic atrophy. Yeah, sure. I think really it comes down to two factors. The first one is that we are going after the very simplest diseases, diseases that are caused by a mutation in one gene and one gene only. And what that means is that we know precisely what is going wrong in the cells inside these patients and precisely what we've got to do to fix it. Now, that doesn't sound very glamorous, but what that translates to when we get to the clinical studies is these drugs have actually got a five to eight times higher probability of success, the likelihood of reaching market at the time that you launch a phase one study. And I think from an investment standpoint, a lot of people are wary of the very low rates of success in biotech. On average, there's only about a 10% chance of a successful market entry uh, when you launch a phase one clinical trial. So if you can move that up to 50, 60, 70% chance of success, you're obviously in a, a much better situation, both with respect to having impact in patient lives, but also the downstream commercial benefits that follow from that. So that's one. And then I think the second is that we are generating what we call first-in-class molecules, first-in-class and ideally best-in-class as well. So we are taking patients who in many instances don't have any treatment options available to them at all, and we're giving them the very best class of drug, one that addresses the root cause of what's going wrong in their body with a view that we can either completely stop or in some cases actually reverse the disease and the way that's manifesting in symptoms for that patient. Amazing. That's brilliant. Thanks for that introduction, Rohan. Now, the recent announcements about your drug candidates in PKD and ADOA suggest significant market opportunities. So could you explain how these innovative therapies position uh, PYC within these markets? Yeah, so both drugs are what we call orphan drugs or drugs that address a rare disease population. Um, the, they are at the upper end of the spectrum in terms of the number of people that are affected by it for a rare disease. They're right at the cutoff between a rare disease and a, what we call a non-orphan or a more common indication, in particular the polycystic kidney disease drug. And I think this is something that is little appreciated is that whilst rare diseases individually are somewhat rare, collectively they're very common and one in 12 people has one. And so there's been a, a very significant effort by the industry to incentivize companies companies like ours to make drugs for these patients because conventionally people were very much focused on indications like cancer uh, where you had much higher rates of prevalence and therefore much more attractive reimbursement environments. Uh, so what the industry has done is they've said anybody who makes a drug for a rare disease, an orphan indication, is going to benefit from much higher prices for those drugs. The median orphan drug price in the United States is around 150,000 US dollars per patient per annum. So there's a very significant financial incentive that's been uh, associated with these indications, polycystic kidney disease and ADOA, and that therefore it creates what is a relatively small patient population, uh, one in a thousand people affected by polycystic kidney disease, one in 35,000 people affected by ADOA, but they are extremely attractive commercial markets. So the kidney market is worth an estimated US $10 billion per annum in the US alone, and ADOA at $2 billion uh, as a target market in general across the uh, the Western world. So very, very attractive commercial indications, despite relatively smaller numbers of patients affected by the indication. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, uh, could you share the expected timeline and uh, any key milestones for your drug candidates as they move from preclinical to clinical status, especially with the recent alignment with the FDA? Yeah, so PYC has got four of these first-in-class disease-modifying drugs within its pipeline, and they're all at slightly different stages of development. So the, the first drug for a blinding eye disease has already progressed into human studies. 
the ADOA candidate will progress in the first half of next year, and then the polycystic kidney disease candidate in the second half of next year. We're hoping that the fourth drug candidate for the neurodevelopmental disorder enters clinical development in early 2025. And so what that gives us from a news flow perspective is really a lot of the readouts that matter human safety and human efficacy. So is our drug safe and well tolerated in patients and is the drug effective at stopping or reversing the disease as we just spoke about? And so those announcements are really coming thick and fast. There are six readouts coming in the next 36 months that will inform the outcomes of each one of those four candidates across those two dimensions that we just spoke about. It will start with the first blinding eye disease drug we'll read out from a safety perspective next year. And we will also get the early insights on the efficacy of that drug program. And by the time we see the efficacy signal coming in that program in the second half, you will then move down to the ADOA asset and you'll have your safety signal in that one. So you can see they just start stacking one into the other over the course of the next three years, uh, providing a, a number of different readouts that are gonna be absolutely critical for PYC's long-term success. Amazing. Now, uh, Rohan, in navigating the complexities of RNA therapeutics, how does PYC manage the challenges in clinical development and regulatory pathways? Lots of expert input, I think, is the, the short answer there. So we're really well supported by clinicians, the doctors who are treating these patients. Uh, the excitement extends not just from the patients who have got these diseases and don't have any treatment options, but also to the clinicians who are treating them. They see the impact for the life-changing nature of these drugs because they're addressing the underlying root cause of these uh, particular diseases. And they are very motivated to help us go through that journey efficiently to bring these therapies to patients. So we're getting an enormous amount of help from different clinical groups around the world, uh, which is very, very engaging and heartening from our perspective. And then we have got a whole bunch of other subject matter experts, contract research organizations, contract drug manufacturing organizations that sit around the infrastructure that we've got internally and are all directed towards pushing these drug candidates to patients very quickly. So some of the nuances there in, on dimensions like the clinical trial design that you alluded to, uh, it's very much governed by trying to balance that speed and the urgency of getting these drugs to patients with the uh, attention to detail and the understanding of the, the design of the trial and the clinical endpoints that we're using to make sure that we're not missing our efficacy signal there. Uh, so yes, there's a competitive tension, but I'm very confident that we can navigate that efficiently because of the extent of the support that we're receiving from so many different experts across the globe. Amazing, very exciting indeed. Now, are there any important partnerships or collaborations that PYC is pursuing or already engaged in to uh, enhance its therapies or gain uh, access to additional resources? Yes, we've pretty much got continuous dialogues with uh, multiple different uh, partners and potential partners throughout the industry who are interested in coming on the journey with us in these drugs. Um, I think the very exciting thing for PYC is we've got to the window where it's it's much, much easier now to bring on board a partner through an out licensing agreement or a collaboration agreement. So for these genetic me medicines, and it's for the reason that we spoke about beforehand, they're much, much more likely to succeed in human studies. And so you, you get a lot of conviction on the part of your partners that they are going to have a, a candidate that is likely to engender a successful market launch to change lives. And so what you see is that the, the transaction that have occurred in this space place a very high value on these assets and they typically occur in the late preclinical window so just before the drug goes into human studies or just after those human studies have started and so we're now very much in that window with multiple assets within our pipeline all of which have uh, entered that transactional window as we refer to it and I think it's something that the ASX in particular would very much like to see uh, we have previously been of the mindset that we're very happy to hold these assets and continue to develop them because we know we're building an enormous amount of value and we're not as reliant on a pharmaceutical partner for the sales and distribution channel that you are in a non-orphan indication. The patients are very well recognized and they're tied to disease registries in the markets of interest to us. So we've got the option of continuing to go alone. There's no urgency uh, with which we need to do one of these transactions, but certainly the conversations that we are having are moving to a crescendo point. And uh, we know that we have the assets in the window where we can get very attractive commercial outcomes that I think will very much appeal to the ASX. 
Amazing. Now, Rohan, looking beyond the current pipeline, what does PYC envision for expanding into new therapeutic areas or leveraging its RNA targeted platform for additional disease indications? I think the first thing to say there is having four first in class and potentially disease modifying drugs is an awful lot. Uh, we've got many, many members of the team working incredibly hard in support of moving these assets through into clinical development. So the focus for us in the short term is just really to execute very well. We know exactly what we've got to do and we know exactly the time frame within which we've got to do it. And it's it's so important for those patients who've got those four diseases that we've touched on already, that we're moving those assets through efficiently, that that is very much our number one focus. But I think one of the great things, certainly from my perspective, one of the exciting things is we are in, they call it, it's a, it's a bad joke, but they call it the RNA-sense. It's the coming of the RNA therapies. They're going to emerge as the third force within the industry. And so we're very excited to see whether or not we can play an even more meaningful part in that beyond the drugs that we've got in our pipeline. So you're likely to see us continue to populate that pipeline with drugs that have got the ability to very precisely change gene expression up or down. And one of the areas that we're excited about is whether or not we can harness technology that takes our drugs to very specific cells within the body. So whether we can deliver the drug just to the cells that are affected by the disease and not to the other cells in the body that are not affected by the disease. If you can concentrate your drug in those cells that need the drug and the change in the gene expression, you're limiting the scope for any off-target adverse tolerability, you know, toxicity problems, and you're maximizing the potential that you've got the potency that you need in order to cross the disease correction threshold. So we're actively exploring uh, some co collaborations in that space right now. And I think that's probably the direction that you'll see us continue to head. Amazing. Well, Rohan, thank you for sharing such valuable insights into PYC Therapeutics groundbreaking work. For anyone watching this interview, if you would like to get in touch with the team at PYC, please see the details at the side of your screen or in the description of this video. Uh, once again, thank you, Rohan, for coming on for this interview. And our team wishes you all the luck with your venture moving forward. Thanks very much, Rhythm. Thank you.